Wiped away his tears. 
and what shall we have to remember thee by? Leave us with thy silver fork. He left with them the silver fork and rode away. A first day he rode, a second day he rode, and on the third day at sun up he found himself approaching a third palace of porphyry, roofed with golden tiles, larger and more elegant than the hawks and the eagles put together. In front of the palace stood a birch tree on which sat a crow. The crow flew down, alighted on the ground, and was transformed into a graceful youth. Come quickly, Sarevna Helena, he cried, our dear brother is coming. Then Sarevna Helena came running from the palace, and met her brother joyfully, embracing him with many questions. With them also the Sarevich abode three days, when he bade them farewell to continue his search for his wife. Thy search may be in vain, said the crow, for the wizard Gaucher is very powerful and cunning. We would have something to recall thee to us. Leave with us thy silver snuff-box, so that we may look on it often, and know of thy welfare. Tsarevich Alexis left behind the silver snuff-box, and again set out. Whether he rode a long way or a short way, by wet roads or dry, he came at last to the castle of Gaucher, where walking in the garden he found his dear one, Maria Marevna. When she saw him, the beautiful Tsar's daughter threw herself on his breast, weeping a flood of tears. O Tsarevich Alexis, she cried, why didst thou disobey my command? Why didst thou open the closet and loose the wizard to our hurt? I am guilty before thee, answered the Tsarevich sadly, but remember not the old things which are past. Come with me and let us fly, while Gaucher is not to be seen, perchance he will not be able to overtake us. So without more ado, he took her up before him on the saddle, and put his good steed to its best pace. Now that day the wizard had gone hunting. Toward evening he rode back to his castle, when suddenly his horse stumbled under him. Thereat he hated it, crying, Why stumbledst thou, sorry nag? Hast thou not been well fed, or dost thou feel some misfortune? The horse replied, Master, I feel a misfortune. Tsarevich Alexis has been here and has carried away thy Maria Morevna. Canst thou overtake them? demanded the wizard. Thou mayest sow a measure of wheat, answered the horse. Thou mayest wait till it is grown, harvest and thresh it, grind the grain to flour, and of it bake five ovens of bread to eat, and even after that I should be able to overtake them. Gaucher bit his horse to a gallop and easily overtook Tsarevich Alexis. Well, he said, when thou gavest me to drink, I promised on occasion to give thee thy life. Therefore this time I do not slay thee. Then taking Maria Marevna from him, he returned to his castle, leaving the Tsarevich weeping. Tsarevich Alexis wept a long time, but weeping was of no avail, and at length he dried his tears, and at daybreak on the morrow rode again to the wizard's castle. Gaucher was once more gone hunting, and the Tsarevich, finding Maria Marevna in the garden, said, Come, mount with me, and let us fly. Gladly would I, she answered, but the wizard will overtake us, and I fear he will slay thee. At least we shall have had some hours together, said Tsarevich Alexis, and taking her up before him, but spurs to his steed. In the evening Gaucher returned from the hunt, and as he neared his castle, his horse staggered. What dost thou, starveling hack, he said? Art thou underfed, or dost thou sense some evil? I sent an evil master, the horse answered. Tsarevich Alexis has been here, and has borne away thy Maria Marevna. 
Meister.